there, viewers. Welcome back to the self made Auto Channel. Got us a 2011 Hyundai Santa Fe. It's got the big 2.4 and it's got a big list and we got a big pile of parts. So we're going to be making a few videos on this. Uh, first off, it needs brakes, all four corners. It needs a new windshield, which was already installed by our local windshield people. So you didn't get to see that. Uh, the back and plates are rusted off it, so we're going to do those as well as the brakes. Uh, has some caliper pins that are seized right up tight. So I don't know if we're going to put the calipers in it or get the pins free. Uh, what else do we have here? Wheel bearings in the back are falling off. I think it has some loose sway bar links. And they want some basic maintenance done, uh, which also includes four new tires. The tires are spanked. Uh, spark plugs, air filter, oil change, stuff like that. So we'll probably split this up into a few videos. We'll call it Project Hyundai. Uh, because if you had project or the word build or anything like that to any other video, it draws in the people. I guess it really doesn't matter where we start. So we'll start at the left front. We'll get the wheels peeled off of here. We'll just do one wheel at a time. Get a little light in here. Get a little light so everybody can see. You can see, I can see. We'll turn it on dim. I'm gonna peel our brake calipers off. Looks like 14 first try. So far, so good. Typically, I do both sides simultaneously. I usually do one first, then the other. If I'm doing a video, so I've got all my appropriate tools out. And this time, we're just going raw. So pull our caliper off. Now, I believe when I looked at it initially, one of these caliper pins is seized up. Perhaps not, maybe it was the back I was thinking of. I did order us calipers in case we need them so we're not kind of hung out to dry in that sense. You never want to be hung out to dry. But if everything looks good, then we'll be golden. That's one thing I like about Napper. I can order stuff, we don't need it, you send it back. That's why I like to buy local. If you do that like with the Rock Auto or the Amazon, it becomes a real pain in the hoo-hoo to send stuff back. So we're going to try to get in here with a 17 swivel. Oh man. Face back. Get that one off. So these are just the caliper bracket bolts we'll be removing. Hopefully. Ooh, this one's a little snug. Snugger. Let's go get in there. Come on. Don't be mean. Come on, stop it. <laughs> Meanie. Both of them are out. Our bracket's off now. The one pin here is nice and loose. This one, not as much. And the boot has holes in it. So that's why. Did I order caliper pin boots? No, I didn't. That's why that looks cruddy like it does. Let's see what we can do there. Pull our rotor off. <coughs> and here's what's left of the backing plate. She's pretty well had. Now I believe, I believe, with the ladder loose, I think that goes behind the wheel bearing. Maybe not. Maybe it just bolts on around the wheel bearing. I don't know. We'll have to look at the new ones and see. Uh, I do see some bolts there. They do not look very friendly. We've got a big package of Hyundai over here. Let's see which one looks like the original. Let me kind of turn your back out. Hey, did we get it first try? Oh, I said I think we did. These are the back ones. Which is super weird. These back ones got like a cast piece and stuff in them for the parking brake shoes and all that. These were pretty cheap. These were pretty expensive. That's weird. Maybe it goes by popularity. Anyhow, let's, uh, let's see what we got to do to put this thing on. First, we'll get this one the rest of the way out of the way. And then we'll open up this one. Get part number on that in case you're looking for one. Genuine Hyundai. Where's that from? Korea. All the way from Korea. Looks like it goes like so. I don't know if you can tweak it. Do you tweak it up and around? I'm not really sure. It does appear 
Wait a minute now. Wait just a dang minute. If that goes on there like that. What in the thunder? Am I looking at the right thing here? This we ripped off here. This was up in this area like that. We ripped that off. Oh, you do have the wrong side, fella. I knew you couldn't get it on the first try. You never do. So if you're looking for the part number, there's the part number right there for this side. This one also made in Korea. Oh, that looks much better, young man. And it does appear to not go behind the wheel bearing. But I don't know, can you, do we tweak it around the wheel bearing or do we pull the wheel bearing to put it on? Now see, if I did the other side, I would already know because I would have just went full caveman on it. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking you pop the wheel bearing off because we would have to tweak the living snot out of this thing to get it around there. Maybe not. Let's just see. Let's just try to be ginger as we can. Mm. It's like a Rubik's Cube. That's not a good analogy. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to bend the crap out of it to get it on there. Uh, I think what we'll do is we will take and pop the wheel bearing off. You know, just take the bolt out, slide it off nice and easy. Get yeah, right. Um, and then because we're going to need to be able to get onto the what's left of the bolts that hold the heat shield on, or the dust shield. So let's uh, spray it down with some uh, penetrating oil. Today's flavor of the day is Croil. We get multiple messages throughout the week on the Facebook and on the YouTube and in the email. And people tell me, why don't you just spray stuff with Croil? It'll make your life easier. So in an effort to make life easy, we are full soaking this one. Even though it does nothing for you, we're gonna do it. I'm not saying Croil's a bad product or any of them are bad products, but everybody's got a breaking point, kid. And we gotta know our limitations. Uh, we're not dealing with just a little bit of, you know, surface rust. This isn't Arizona. This is like straight up corrosion, bottom of the ocean. Worst of the worst. So I don't think the penetrating fluids uh, do much for us in you know, situations like this, but it does give you a false sense of security. First try again. There we go. Oh, what do you know? What do you know? Am I going to be able to get it? Oh, get, get some. Get some. My hopes and dreams to get back here with a 14 mil swivel and that these little studs will just cooperate and come right out. Uh, I might have to use a short socket and an extension, I'm thinking. Short socket extension, we're going for the top one. Doesn't really want to go on. Let me see if I can tap it with another socket. Oh, it looks like it's on. I don't know if we're gonna have enough pizzazz here, but we're gonna give it a go. She went about halfway. Maybe it needs more coil. I see somebody just showed up, so I'm gonna have to go for a minute. Okay. Do us good coil. Letting me down, Coil. You letting me down. There's number two. Number one came out. I had to talk to a customer, but uh, there's number two. We're going to get the rest of them out here, folks. Well, that went without casualty. I was 
thinking. I'm just thinking out loud here, folks. Let's see, where's that speed sensor? That's up where we can't really hurt it. <laughs> sort of speed. I'm gonna put this nut back on here. I wanna keep the bearing from popping apart. We're gonna give it a few taps. But we don't want it to fall apart. We're gonna whack it on the back of its face. Yes, I'm gonna. Uh, we're gonna use Brooksy. We're just gonna see if it kind of cracks loose. Uh, it should because it has been soaked with magic spray. So we're gonna give it a few whacks, see if it just cracks loose. If not, we'll use more different methods. That's America right there, folks, Brooks. Well, I'll be jiggered. You show up Brooks, it gets scared, comes right off. Unbelievable, this is, maybe this is Arizona. Because that little guy has just cracked loose. I thought I saw it cracking loose when I was taking the bolts out. Maybe there is some magic in that bottle, baby. And no, it's not bending the hub or cracking it. And no, I'm not mad enough to hold on to the hammer down at the handle. I can, but I'm gonna hit my hand. Wow, looky, look. Some days you get lucky, baby. There's the phone, just in time. And there's our wheel bearing. That don't sound like no choo-choo. So let's see if these come out. They are 10, or at least they used to be. We'll try them by hand. We'll give them the old handy because, oh, look at that. I'm telling you what, this Croil, that's making me a believer. However, the only way we can know for sure is to do the other side and do it dry, no lube, and see, see how hard that side goes. It could be because we're pounding on them too. I find that heating and beating works better than any spray on the market, to be honest with you. In my opinion, but well, what the heck do I know? Not like I've been dealing with rust my entire life. I wouldn't even know how to fix a car that wasn't rusty. What do you do? I just can't believe how ridiculously easy this one just went. So what I'm gonna do now is, uh, in an effort to not make every video six hours long, I'm just gonna clean this area up. We're gonna get the whizzy wheel. We'll clean around here. I'll get my little die grinder. We'll clean inside of its hole. Get that all cleaned up. We'll get the bearing cleaned up. And then technically, if this is the one that we determined was gonna fit here, we'll be able to bolt that right back on. Everybody's gonna be happy. I'm happy, you're happy. Just everybody's happy. Chablam! <laughs> it's clean. Wish I knew how to do fancy camera tricks because I'd have done something like where I'm like, ooh, you know, and then it showed up clean, but. Uh, frankly, I can't. I probably could, but fluid film. Spray her with a little sheet wool, and then we'll get our little thing I'm gonna on here, the little thing we came to get, our dust shield. Now, perhaps you could tweak and twist this around in a variety of ways to get it out and around, and many of you will comment that is why that is slotted like that. However, I do feel a whole lot better pulling the wheel bearings off to have, you know, to put this on and to have a listen. Now this car was so bad when I initially drove it that I could not tell if any of the front wheel bearings were bad because the rear ones are so loud and loose uh, that I feel a whole lot better being able to take these bearings off, give them a little spin in my hand and make sure that they're not, you know, they're not noisy. Obviously they're not loose. I can you know, check for that on the car. Um, 
it just makes me feel better. Makes me feel good on the inside, knowing that when we give it back to this young lady, that everything is good and happy and all is well. So I cleaned up the back side of the bearing too, around its groove so it should slip right in. And I cleaned off the face of it while I had it off because, you know, why not? Uh, so we're gonna make sure we give, give a good spritz down inside there of the film. I'll douche the back of the bearing as well. And then we'll slip it right in. This way here, when the bearing fails, not if it fails, but when it fails, the next guy to come do it will be like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, I'm gonna see, uh, we're probably gonna put a little Loctite on these even though they protrude through and get caught themselves. I'll get a little Loctite, we'll get the specs. According to data, it's 72 foot pounds on the old wheel bearing. Let's see if we can't achieve that. They had a broad range, like 50 something to 72. We just go on the high side. We'll just make sure she's snug. How's that sound? Now to do all the rest of here, now I gotta turn the wheel. Now when you're putting your front split washer back in, it is convex. Make sure the convex side is facing up. So you'll see it. It's, it's hard to see on camera, perhaps, but that side would face down. This side would face, put it on the way took it off. That's what I'm gonna tell you. Unless it was on wrong, then you know, put it on the right way. And they tell us 144 to 188 on this fella. But you still have to be able to line up the cutter key. So wherever that falls, a little screwdriver here so we can hold on to the thing. We'll see, we'll start on the low end of the scale. We'll start at 150, even though the difference between 150 and 180 you know, it's only 30 foot pounds, but it's like uh, 1 60th of a turn, you know, once it gets tight. So we'll try to stop it. That's 106 right there. That's 148.1. And uh, we're about a half a hole on each one. So let's bump her up. Let's just see if we're pooping laughter here. We'll go up to 180. Usually once stuff snugs down, it doesn't move very much to get to, you know, another 30 foot pounds. We'll see though. Maybe the washer makes the difference. Oh, we just got a bit more to go. Look at me. All these false claims. That lines up the QA and puts us at 169er. Good even number. Now we will install the new rotor. Napper, not a sponsor. Keep our new shield from getting rotted out immediately. Now I see there is a broke off screw in here. So we're gonna have to make sure you line that up with the screw hole. Wanna make darn sure, darn Rudy tootin' that it's not gonna cause any interference. Probably should have ground the head off it just to be sure, but it looks okay. It looks like it's centered in that hole pretty well. However, I don't like taking chances. I just grab that off, but just to be sure. Now what I do with my rotor? Are you kidding me? Who, who loses a rotor? Fear not, I found it. <laughs> right where I left it, oddly enough. I'm gonna go and talk to a customer there. Okay. Things look a lot better than they did when we started, I'll tell you that. Next, uh, step two, we should go work on this. Now I did order some new hardware. However, it will not be here until the afternoon. So, what we can do is, like I did mention, I do have calipers over there. We can be sneaky. We can be that one guy who takes the parts out of the box, which we probably will do, and then we'll just replace them when they show up. So, uh, let's go see what we can do. Uh, we'll get this thing cleaned up, but before we do that, we probably our best interest let's make sure that piston goes back in on that caliper let's be on the safe side I hate to get that thing all cleaned up find out this caliper smoked oh she's going in real nice phenolic piston it's french for plastic give me a free tip if your shop's kind of slow you got nothing going on 
try to make a YouTube video. <laughs> I don't know where we left off. Uh, I believe I was cleaning the caliper bracket, which is now clean. So we're gonna apply some silicone grease. I'm all out of the Permatet Extreme. So we're using 3M, not a sponsor, just regular silicone brake lube. And we'll use that to grease behind our abutment hardware here. I just threw these in the sandblaster to get all the gobbly gook off them. Cleaned up that pin too. I think I like using the colored stuff because I can see where it goes. This stuff I can't. And then I did order new brake hardware. Did I already mention that? Did I tell you guys that? I don't know where we are. But I've got some new uh, rubbers coming for this afternoon. I think we were going to steal it out of the new caliper, but we're so close to the afternoon at this point. We'll just uh, be patient. Patient endurance. I think somebody else is here now. I'm not complaining, folks. I'm just saying. It's usually not an issue because Mrs. O's here, but she's not here today. I've got my boy Josh, he's busy over there, so. I'm gonna make sure everything is cleaned off. Tell you what, we can just pull that whole rubber right out of there. You know why? Because we're getting new ones, so we might better just stick them, on, stick them on both sides. So we'll leave that out for the time being. <laughs> that looks good. We'll make sure our pins are sufficiently lubricated. Spread that on there. Not too much now. Make sure that's all good. And then, like I say, we'll wait for our hardware to show up. We'll lube up this one. We got a lot on there. That hole's all nice and dried out. I cleaned it out with one of our little nylon brushes that we use to clean them out. I think you guys have seen that in the past. Oh, yeah. That works good. And we'll just leave that like it is for the time being. Uh, no reason we can't put the pads in and get the caliper bracket torqued on. Oh, we just can't finish putting it all together is all. Make sure our pads are going to slide nice and easy. Oh yeah, easy does it. That one's nice and easy. So let's get this thing put on and tightened down. To put a little blue Loctite on those fellas. Well, you can't see it because crappy camera angles and such. I think these are about 72 foot-pounds or one ugh, however. Must be whatever we torque last was 72 foot-pounds too because the torque wrench is already set. It makes me have some concern. I'm going to double check my specs here. It does seem kind of light duty for a bolt so big. I could be wrong. And yes, I'm using an extension because you can't fit in between here and there with a regular socket. Just FYI. That was right, 72.3 according to Hyundai. We'll stick our pads up in here so we don't misplace them. This fits in there very gingerly. I'll stick the outer one in, goes in the same. All right. Oops, nice and easy. Nice and easy. And now we just have to wait. And we wait for those. And I think because I don't want my pads to hit the ground now, I know I could take them off, set them on the lift and stuff. But we'll just... Uh, very lightly clamp it with a pair of channel locks and then we'll wait for the new stuff to show up. I'm going to go on and keep calm and carry on on the other side. I know a lot of you are questioning why is this Jive Turkey changing pads on this thing when the pads still look like they have meat on them. Well this is why. This is the passenger side. You can see clearly the inside pad is smoked. Outside pad, you know, 75% still. 
uh, good. So when you see this, there's usually two possible scenarios that can cause your inside pad to wear right off and your outside pad to be like brand new. So typically your caliper floats when it squeezes, it squeezes the pads evenly. It pushes on the inside pad and then the caliper floats on the pins and you know, ultimately puts pressure on the outside pad too, pretty evenly. So when you see this, uh, a couple things can happen. Either A, your outside pad is seized right up, which is not the case here. If your outside pad is seized, you know, say that sucker's locked right in place when your piston comes out, it's only gonna be working or actuating the inside pad. So we know that's not the case in this situation. The outside pad is good. The other thing that can cause that is a seized caliper pin. So if your caliper pins are frozen, it does not allow the caliper to float because it floats on these pins and uh, can cause you know the same situation here. So, so there's that. There's the inside pad. Now which one caused this? Well, we know it's not choice A because I just showed you the outside pad is free. We see that that pin is free. So what's that mean for this pin? I think it's stuck like Chuck. It don't move at all. Well, actually it moves a little bit. No, it doesn't. That's just my hand slipping. So that's what caused it on this side. So free tip for you, in case you're looking at trying to diagnose why your pads are wearing unevenly. That's it. Perhaps. Maybe. Maybe not in your kit. Never mind. Can we get it free though? I don't know. Sometimes. Oh, maybe I was turning it. Maybe I just need to quit being a wuss bag. Don't keep your face above this when you're pulling on it, because if it slips, it'll catch you right in the lips. Oh, whew. off she comes. We're getting new hardware for it, anywho. This one has got to split towards the top. And there's my telephone. You guys are like little time travelers. Welcome to the afternoon. <laughs> it is now afternoon. Our rubbers came in, so we got these from Napper. So we'll just pop them out. Of course, we got our pins all lubed. Now make sure you put the right side in, not the wrong side, and they'll snap right in the groove in there. All right, and we've got a new rubber sleeve for our lower pin. And I dropped it right on the floor. I'll try that again. We'll slip that right over the end of our pin, maybe. Push that on. Slide a little bit of our lube over it. Slip that right in the hole. And then we'll do the same thing with the top one. Of course, that doesn't have that little rubber silencer on there for absorbing vibrations and noise. So we got that rubber in there. This one's all looped up still. Put that in. And that's that. And I guess you want to see putting the caliper on, don't you? Sounds like there's just an accident. Nothing major, just my boy Josh dropping tools onto his cart. So we're gonna take our caliper, which we already pushed back. And then you wanna make sure that behind your caliper on these ears down here, if you're looking down here, that they don't have a lot of rust and crust build up on them, which these ones do not And then what we'll do is we'll get a gob of silicone grease, a big old gob there, smear that on there. And then use your finger. We'll kind of wipe it around. I don't know if you guys are in frame. Kind of. Just look down at the bottom corner of your screen. We'll smear that on the back side. That's going to cut down on some noise. Now we're going to go on the face of our piston also. All right, once we have that lubed, now remove the lube from your finger. <laughs> That off. How come I do that and not the brush? Well, that keeps all the gobbledygook out of your container. Pure silicone lube or brake lube, whichever you're using. I haven't been able to get my hands on the uh, purple stuff here. I don't know if Napper quit carrying it or what the story is, but got a couple different flavors kicking around. I got a couple buckets of stay lube, which I've used in the past. It's the, I think it's the 12 ounce buckets of the black stuff. Works pretty well. It doesn't really matter what flavor you use, so long as it's actual, you know, brake grease. You don't want to be sticking regular grease up on here. We're going for 
24.7. Ooh, very close. And for the record, Hyundai Service Info does not tell you to open the bleeder for pushing the caliper back or push, pushing the piston back. Just a little FYI. I know we get in a lot of trouble over that. A lot of people get pumped. I'm gonna give you a little free tip here. I don't say I never gave you anything. When you're putting the, when you're putting in the caliper pin and the bolt, and they have flat spots so you can hold it with a wrench. Okay. Now if you're in there with a wrench and you're holding it and you're using whatever apparatus you already used to tighten it, be mindful that your wrench actually has room to move in here. Okay, now that sounds stupid. So when the wrench is on there, make sure you've got space between it and the caliper because say this here, for example, like you're using this Mac Tools wrench. Okay, now if this caliper was loose, the pin was loose and I had that in there, you inadvertently could be tightening up the space between the flange and the head of your ratchet. So you could have this in here. Now that's not a good example, let's see. Take this here for example, like you got this great big chrome X-beam, SK, not a sponsor. And you had this in here, okay, it won't fit now, but let's say you had that in there and you tighten that one up and you're like, oh, my wrench is stuck. You wiggled it out, your bolt would actually be loose because it would have been just tightened on the flanges or the, you know, either side of your wrench. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, make sure, use a skinny wrench, okay? For the record, I did the other side and for the record, this bearing came right off, easy peasy. And for the record, I did put the new boots on both sides, uh, FYI. So everything turned out good. That's part one of Project Hyundai. So that's it folks, uh, at least that's it for this part. So that's replacing, I guess you could use this as a form of replacing the wheel bearing. If you were looking for some guidance there, which we don't provide, merely entertainment. But if you're looking how does the wheel bearing come off, how can I replace them dust shields? Uh, pads, rotors, get seized, pins freed up, hardware, stuff like that. You could probably, you know, poke around there. Anyways, why don't you poke on down to that comment section, leave a question, comment, criticism, concern later down there, subscribe and ring that bell and push other buttons so you get notifications. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.